Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and International of UPM, accompanied by members of the Faculty Management to inaugural lecture, Alluring Beauties of the Forest, The Wonders of Malaysian Wild Orchids. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem Negaraku and Putra Gemilang. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now be seated.
Please give a warm round of applause to Club Sunitari Adi Mastuli with a beautiful rendition of Tarian Putri Saada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and a very good morning. Our distinguished guest of honor, Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Saripan, Deputy Vice Chancellor. Academic and International of University Putra Malaysia. Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Muhammad Basharuddin Abdul Rahman, Dean of Faculty of Science. Our honored speaker, Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Rusiago, Lecturer of Biology Department, who will be presenting her inaugural lecture today. Emeritus Professors of Faculty of Science, Members of the University Management, Tan Sri, Tan Sri, Puan Sri, Puan Sri, Datuk Sri, Datuk Sri, Datuk Datuk, Datin Datin, distinguished guests, family members of the speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, let us use this opportunity to thank Allah for his blessing for this auspicious event today. It is hoped that through this event, we will be able to gain no more knowledge on the wonders of Malaysian wild orchids, and get to know one another and hopefully develop new networks among each other. Without further ado, I would like to invite our most distinguished guest of honor, Yang Berbahagia Professor Muhammad Iqbal Saripan, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and International of Institute Putra Malaysia, to chair the event. Please give a warm round of applause. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and uh, very good morning to all of you. Yang bahagia Profesor Dr. Basharuddin Abdul Rahman, Dean Faculty of Science, University Putra Malaysia. Our honored speaker today, Yang bahagia Profesor Dr. Rosiago, University Management members, distinguished guests, family members of the speakers, I was told that uh, family, husband, kids, as well as mother, 90, 90 years old, comes all the way from Sarawak. <laughs> Staff and students, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to convey regards from Yang Bahagia Datin Paduka, NAP Chancellor, who's not been able to be with us today because uh, she's on official trip uh, to overseas. And I'm honored to be the person who's going to introduce Professor Dr. Rosia Go in this auspicious occasion. Professor Dr. Rosia Go was born and raised 
in a village longhouse located in Teluk Pajar, Selidap, Sarawak. She is of an Iban, Melanau and Chinese ethnicity. Her early deprived years living in longhouse built within a mangrove pit swamp with hill forest surroundings really helped her to build her early interest in plants within her wild habitats. Her, her early memory re relocation is of planting her own first orchid at the age of five called a Symbidium dianum. I hope I pronounce it right. Collected from the old rubble estate behind her longhouse. From the age of 11, she spent her years in town located boarding school, Sekolah Menengah Kebangsaan Meradong, and later years in College Abdillah in Kuching. She pursued her tertiary education at University Kebangsaan Malaysia and successfully graduated for Masters in Science and PhD in Science. By starting her journey with the study of seaweeds during bachelor, ferns during masters, and trees, very difficult to pronounce, Tismaniodion dendrion, um, Lamia C for PhD. Uh, and now she's a well respected uh, taxonomist. Professor Rosia joined UPM in 1998 and developed her career all the way to become a professor of botany. She's currently serving also as the deputy director at the Corporate Co uh, Strategy and Communications Office, or in short, COSCOM. Currently, she has over then 20 years of field of work, of research, and has become a world-renowned expert in orchids. Her focus is primarily on orchid diversity and, and conservation and ethnobotany, primarily on med medicinal medicine, plants, sorry, including among indigenous people, wetland conservation and restoration, and theridophytes flora. This is actually a very difficult speech and introduction. In her years of field of research, she has visited many difficult inaccessible forests in Malaysia, together with her students and co-workers. In one of the occasions, actually, I asked her, I mean, because normally we find wild orchids somewhere in very deep forests. So I asked her, is there anybody actually followed her coming back home? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah? But uh, I guess uh, uh, she has been in this area and has been to all the forest until the things inside the forest maybe already know her by now. Through those years of field effort, a significant number of 25 new plant species have been discovered and described, including 12 new orchid species. She has also secured multiple research grants, totaling more than 3 million ringgit, with many of these grants come from the renowned international organizations. And money is given in the recognition of her work towards tropical botany knowledge advancement and biodiversity discoveries within Malaysia, particularly orchids, medicinal plants, and ethnobotanical knowledge of the indigenous people in Malaysia. Her contributions have devoted UPM as a leading university for world orchid research and diversity, respected in Malaysia as well as at the international level. Professor Rusia has authored 12 books and produced more than 100 cited journal papers. Her books include nine significant publications on wild orchids of Malaysia, 47 chapters in monographs and books, Trees Flora of Sabah and Sarawak in local and international, flora publications, and other in non-cited popular writings as well as newspapers. Professor Rusia is an active contributing member of National Council of Professors and was also an associate fellow of Academy of Science Malaysia. She is a world-recognized authority on Malaysian wild orchid diversity and the sole representative to the IUCN Species Survival Commission Orchid Specialist Group. In her IUCN SSC Orchid Specialist Group role, she provides advice and technical support towards international efforts on conservation and plant diversity initiatives 
including programs to study document, save, restore, and manage orchids and its ha habitats effect effectively. Professor Rosia rose from the humble beginnings to become the first Iban woman to achieve a notable level of academic success. Her journey towards becoming a notable academic and a renowned orchid expert is truly inspiring. She has achieved excellence in academic and research as well as the professional involvement as an orchid ex uh, expert as written in the inaugural book. Without further delay, let us now listen to Professor Rosia Go's inaugural lecture entitled uh, Alluring Beauties of the Forest, the Wonders of Malaysian Wild Orchids. Please. Selamat pagi. Good morning. I'm glancing through who is here. Oh, my classmates are here. Friends. Right. Okay. Uh, let me start. <coughs> oh, my my supervisors are also here. Ex supervisors and also mentor. Okay. Salam sejahtera. Selamat pagi. Saya ucapkan kepada semua yang hadir pada pagi ini uh, Kepada semua uh, dan juga ke terima kasih kepada uh, Profesor Iqbal uh, Sebagai selaku chairman uh, the, uh, the, the program pada pagi ini Dan kepada uh, Prof. Basha, my dean and also my friend So I don't have to call him full name Okay and uh, my uh, the members of the faculties management, my, my Ketua Jabatan, Dr. Mus, and the uh, Ketua uh, Penolong Pendaftar, Puan Fairuz, uh, the um, announcer pagi ini, uh, Dr. Riz, and then uh, to all the rest of uh, uh, yang sudi hadir ke uh, program saya pada pagi ini. Um, Tan Sri Tan Sri, Datuk Datuk, Tan Sri Puan Sri Puan Sri, Datuk Sri Datuk Sri, Datuk Datuk dan Datin Datin dan semua uh, distinguished guests guests that uh, here this morning, and also I uh, would like to thank all my my family members, my siblings, my husband and my daughter. My three sons are not here. My brother-in-law, my uh, Datuk Sri Atta, and my sister-in-law, Madam Anna Yap, and um, and my brothers, my sisters, my sister-in-law, and and all that are here today. I'm so honoured because this is the first time my family members are able to listen to me talking. And I I hope I hope that I'm not going to talk uh, so scientifically because that will will bore them. And my mom is here. I'm so honoured, and she is actually 98 years old, and um, still able to walk around. Okay, and uh, to. Basically, I just want to make this this occasion a very, uh, what you call it, uh, relaxed occasion, not a scholarly uh, occasion. I hope Prof. Ibal will agree with me with that, so that you don't have to berbelit lidah untuk sebut scientific names. All right. Um, selamat pagi, uh, Professor Emeritus Datuk Dulatif, my mentor, my supervisor, and Datuk Sri Lim Chongkiet also is around. Okay, all the way, and Datin Farida is around, all the way from Penang, Datin Sri Lim Chongkiet, come and support me. Thank you very much. And the rest of my uh, colleague, um, Prof. Gwen and so on, I, I'm not able to say everybody's name. And my classmates, uh, Rooney Servesta and also uh, Hajar Maidin, that's in the university. Okay, and then my schoolmates, uh, Trisa from, uh, and also Sophia, they are both from my schoolmates during the Form 4 and the Form, form 5. Schoolmates, thank you very much. My pastor, Pastor Bila, and so on, and all the people that I oh my, so many things to say. Okay, there's so many people. No need to say every, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, so uh, so let I let me start. Bizinkan saya memulakan syarahan dengan dalam bahasa Inggris, and hope that my Indai can just listen and look at the pictures. That's all. So that's why I put so much pictures on the on the slides. Okay. 
Um, okay, so the title is very interesting, right? Alluring. <laughs> Something that is uh, somebody can never thought of, alluring. And, and that's the reason why orchids are actually very alluring. You, they are beautiful to look at, and sometimes they deceive you. Okay, but that's why you, it is uh, very interesting for me to, to, to give the talk today to, so that you can to highlight you how important that uh, things is. Uh, Dr. Misri is here from Jaffa. Oh, okay, thank you for coming. Yeah, this, this series inaugural lecture is the number two, three, four, a sequence of two, three, and four. So very significant. And uh, I have to show you this picture because it's using to honor UPM's uh, uh, official robe rather than uh, apart from my own. Okay. So my talk today will be uh, addressing the, the titles uh, as shown. Uh, I hope I can compile my 20 years of work on orchids in one hour. I hope, really hope. If I exit a little bit, please bear with me. I won't make you sleep. Okay? As an introduction, why orchids? What is so important about orchids? Why is it so, so interesting about orchids? Okay, Confucius said this is a king of fragrant plants. I don't deny that. But I don't want to agree with John Ruskin because he said a prurient of pat patricians. So that is not true. Okay, but all over, all over the world, people is looking for orchids. Uh, and uh, people are actually adore orchids from the royals and to the peasants. They are all loves orchids. So that's why I was thinking, uh, when I was young, when I was five years old, I saw this uh, Cymbidium dianum. It's uh, always flowering in my uh, backyard uh, rubber trees. I was following one of my sister to Toregita. Okay? So can I mix it with some Malay? We, we, because for the, these, some of the, they were not able to speak English. Okay? So that, that point of time, uh, that experience that caused me to love orchids so much from the age of five. Okay? But orchid has its myth and how it got its name also with a, a story behind it. Orchid. Okay? See, I simply put the word testicles there so that it can... So this is the first orchid, the, 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 the plant that Theophratus described. Okay? He called it orchis because that orchis means the testicles in the Greek. So therefore, he put the first genus of an orchid as orchis and the... And the Type specimen or the type species for orchid is orchis muscular. Muscular means man, okay? So therefore, it's orchids, orchids for men. So the myth was that the Greeks believe the, the whatever, when, whenever ladies that is of ripe age consume the flower from this orchis muscular, they will increase their fertility and bore, the, uh, bore them a son. So that was the belief by the Greeks. I don't know whether that's true or not. We'll, we'll try those who are, you can try those who are in the age of producing. Okay? In history, okay, orchids can be found all over the world in the Arctic, except for the, in, into the uh, Antarctic. Okay? Those, where the place where are not too cold and not too dry. So you can find orchids there from the, and uh, it is uh, about 25,000 species altogether in 850 genera. So that's a very huge family, 25,000 species. So wonder when can I cover that 25,000? Not in a million years, I guess. Okay, except for the coldest and the driest land, and coexist with dinosaurs during the Jurassic period. See how clever I am? Those, those flowers are not there, but I just put it there so that it looks like it is coexist with the dinosaurs. But the fossil shows, the fossil shows that it is within the is uh, during those period of Jurassic period. Okay, as an introduction, orchids, they grow in many places. Okay, on the tree as a lithophytes, eh, as a epiphytes, and on rocks as a lithophytes, and also on the ground, my beloved Corybas. It's on as a, the this particular uh, orchid. The Coribas villosus, that orchid is only a size of a five cents for your information. But I make it big so that you all can enjoy it as I see it through my lenses and of eyes. 
eh, Theophrastus Orchis. It was written in the book, the ancient book of botany, the Historia Plantarum. So orchid means orchis. So it was believed that the smallest orchid is actually Bulbophyllum minutissimum, the size of three to four mm. Can you imagine that? You might not believe that it's actually an orchid, but through the, light, the eyes and the lenses of the botanists, they will see that as an orchid. They knew that it's an orchid. And to the most massive uh, uh, orchid, which is about 20, 200 meters long, a vine, in form of a vine, which is Vanilla griffithii. This particular picture, I took it in, in Trangano. So this Vanilla is actually 200 meters long and has more than 2,000 seed pots on the tree itself. I couldn't believe it. The whole trunk of that particular tree where it was floating so heavily broke and snapped and fall on the ground. So that's the reason why I can collect them. If it never fall down and never drop to the ground, I will never, uh, never collect them and I will never be able to measure them up to 200 meters. Okay, so that's Vanilla Griffithii, a very promising crop of an orchid that could be developed into a, that could produce vanillin. Okay, so then we have believed that the giant orchid actually was the biggest orchid, but it is probably the, the most heavy orchid, the heaviest orchid, which is Grammatophyllum speciosum, the tiger orchid, or also known as the giant orchid. It is an epiphyte on the trees, up in the tree, very high in the canopy, because it requires a lot of sun. Okay? And one of the pictures down there is the process of loading uh, close to a ton uh, um, Grammatoph Grammatophyllum speciosum collected from um, logging concessionaries in Trangano. So it's, one ton lorry got to carry one ton uh, Grammatophyllum. So it's a huge orchid. So we normally ask the identity of orchids. Okay. So how do you identify your orchids? How do you know that that, that particular plant belongs to an orchid? It's simple. The orchids, we, we identify them through their flowers. The flowers itself has a very specific character called the labellum or the lip which is a modified petals, oh, now it becomes scientific, which is part of the flower that is developed into something that looks like pouch and different from the rest of the petals of the flowers. So this is the... Let me show you. So this is the portion of the flower of an orchid that is called labellum, okay, or the lip. So that from that particular flower, we already instantly will know that that plant belongs to orchids. But and if there is no flower, what, what should you do? How, do you, how, are you going to un, how are you going to identify your orchids? Easy as well. The roots of an orchid will always have hairs, very hairy hairs. And the roots are also very succulent. So therefore, from that particular two, two, uh, two characters, one can always, uh, can always tell that it's either it's an orchid or other plants. The orchid flower structure, so this is another uh, picture how it is, uh, it is described. I don't have to go through each and every sepal, petals, and so on, but this is the flower. That's how the orchid looks like. And then how the flower blooms. Okay, so let me show you that how this flower blooms. Just enjoy 30 seconds only. So this is the phalaenopsis blooming. It took at least 54 hours for them to complete of a three flower blooms. My sister will call this Borneo orchid. She is also another uh, contributing factor for me to love and learn orchids because she keep a lot of orchids in her house and plant orchids better than I do. Okay, so that's about how the flower blooms. It took 54 hours to complete a three bloom flowers. Orchid vegetative structure. So here we have the orchids itself. It's always have some some orchids will have pseudobulbs, the swollen part of the of the the trunk, and some orchids will have the roots 
that are um, hairy and also succulent, which is actually the val val the suc succular roots. Okay. So orchid classification. Okay, let's go to classification. It's not not so easy, not so simple, but I can make it simple in five subfamilies. It's known as Apo Apositoidae, Vaniloidae, Cypripidoidae, and also Edendroidae, Epidendroidae. These are the five subfamilies, and also Orchidoidae, so the five subfamilies, so something not right. So these are the representatives of those orchids, belongs to those sub five subfamilies altogether. As an epiphytic, here are some examples of the epiphytic orchids, the Dendrobium, the Van Vanda, and also the Bulbophyllum and also Renantera. So these are four examples. There are thousands of them, but I only give you four because I have so many more to show you. As an elitophytic, those orchids grow on the crack and the crevice of rocks. So those are called the elitophytics. We have Pephiopedilums, we have Bulbophyllums, and most of the Bulbophyllums are actually found in the rocky area, in rocks and and apart from that, don't we have terrestrial orchids? Okay, we have pyres here, another pyres, and also a calante. Saprophytic. These are orchids that does not have any their own does not produce their own food. They don't have leaves. Okay, saprophytic. They depend on the fungi. Okay, so these are two here. Uh, a few species that is actually only notice them. You notice them. You know them when they have fruits and also when they have flowers. So those are saprophytic orchids. They don't. They don't have greens with them. Galeola. Commercial value. Why? Why is that a question? When you look at orchids, they are so beautiful, right? Is there any value to it? Commercial value. Yes. Okay. I want to share with you. This is one most expensive orchid. Number three in the world in terms of prices in the world. Okay, so it's top for orchids is the highest price. Okay, it's known as a Shenzhen Nongke as orchid. It is a hybrid actually, and it costs one hundred and sixty thousand pounds when it first on auction, and somebody bought it and nobody will have it after that. Okay, but there are other hybrids were there. Okay, so for, we have our own. Top 10 flowers, orchids in the world in terms of price. This is Pephiopedilum rosechaldeanum, found in Kinabalu, uh, in Kinabalu, Sabah. It is also known as gold of Kinabalu. You can guess how much do you think that is? A whooping 3,800 pounds per plant with six flowers per stock. So those money in orchids actually. Okay, we have uh, Pephiopedilum cendarianum, which is also highly priced. And uh, this is the painting and also the real picture of it. So this particular species, Pephiopedilum cendarianum, has been used as the mother plant for many hybrids because they, people wanted to look at the long petals or the side petals that can reach up to two, uh, two feet, eight inches in length. The cut flowers is another commercial uh, value for orchids. Okay, here are some examples that I have shown you at the, audit at the auditorium today. So these are the dendrobiums and also the vanda, mokara, and so on. Those are all. These are all hybrids. Okay, I cannot afford to give you all the species. Cantlea hybrid and also the vanda hybrid. So this is vanda Miss Jaquim on your right. So that is a national flower for Singapore. Then we have the Mokara, hybrid of Mokara, and also the Dendrobium hybrid. Okay. Traditional medicine, everybody will talk about when it comes to plants, people will ask, is there any medicinal value to orchids? So I normally tell people, yes, they do. So this is one example, Gastrodia elata. Okay. Normally, it was, it, this is introduced by the Chinese, actually, because the Chinese are very good in medicinal plants. Okay. So this, this Gastrodia elata, um, they, they, they collect all the um, um, testicles, um, the tubes, uh, the, the tubers, and they dry it and they make it into various kinds of medicine in capsule 
put it in capsules, put it in liquid, and also in put them in cream. So that is actually the uses of Gastrodia elata. It is meant for tonic and well-being for men. Okay? And then we have this species that belongs in, was found in Malaysia, which is also the, uh, the one that is in the middle, is actually called Hanching Ali. Why it is known as Hanching Ali? Because it was believed that the roots, when the, when the dried roots were boiled, you can drink the roots to, to, for disease that related to your bladder. So they use that for, that's why they call it Hanching Ali. And it's really smelly. When you, the moment you pull it out, it smells like urine. So I think that's the reason why they call them Hanching Ali anyway. But mind you, all many trees are known as Ali Ali and Fatima Fatima. I don't understand why. Until today, I also still understand why. Maybe most of the Bomo last time among the Malays are either named Fatima or either named Ali. I have a student called Siti Fatima. Orang Melaka. Selalu ada nama orang Siti Fatima, orang Melaka. Okay, then we have the uh, Kalante, tri Triplicata. So those plants here that I showed you, there's not all that are having uh, what you call it with medicinal value. There are so many. I just, just pick up one or two that may, uh, probably uh, will entice you further into knowing orchids. So these are as food. Okay, these are Mediterranean and also the, um, what you call it, the temperate orchids. They are most, most of them, all of them are actually terrestrial orchids. The highest number of terrestrial orchids is actually found in the uh, subtropics. The tropical ones are all epiphytics, mostly epiphytic. 80% of the orchids found in the tropical rainforest are actually epiphytics. So these four species here are known to have produced bulbs, uh, produced roots or tubers that are edible, very high in minerals. Okay, and then of course flower uh, flavoring. Everybody knows vanilla. I think up to now also maybe there is still somebody who asks, where does that vanilla come from for the uh, for the ice creams, vanilla ice cream, vanilla cake? So this is it. It comes from vanilla, uh, from the genus called vanilla, and uh, the one that is being commercialized is vanilla planifolia. Okay. And then we have one potential one. Vanilla uh, Griffithi, the one that on the bottom, and we are the newly uh, identified species that I discovered a year ago, or oh, actually discovered five years before that, but published last year. This is Vanilla Sanguineo vanosa. Why is it so difficult? Why must put a Sanguineo vanosa? It is because you look at the leaf. Okay, there are red veins. So it is a translation into Latin to make it, Latinize it into sanguino venosa, venosa veins, sangui, something reddish. Okay, so this vanilla is very important if you like ice cream vanilla very much. So this is what it come from. It's not from your, it's not from the extract of the vanilla, but it's actually from the vanilla seeds that has the flavors. Okay, other uses, of course, ornamentals. Okay, we have the Belina, which is the Sarawak national flower. And then we have Iridis, which is very, very uh, fragrant. Okay, Belina and also Violasha are both fragrant orchids. Okay, all these orchids are actually produce uh, nice uh, fragrance. So therefore, they are, the perfumes are actually extracted from them. As for Belina, we have, an, uh, we have in the market now, the... Uh, perfume called Belina itself. So the discovery journey into the wilderness. Why is it wilderness? Because I learn and study wild orchids. Not the wild in character, but the wild in growth. Because they are growing wild in the jungle. So I managed to cover many parts of the country, especially Peninsula Malaysia, because I have a very good access to uh, Jabatan Perhutanan uh, Senanjung, and they'll give me uh, permits to study, to go to the jungle and to study the, all the orchids. But not in Sarawak unless I have a, but currently I have a very good relationship, my own classmate with my own bedmate in, in, the, in the roommate. Um, uh, Puan Runi is actually now the deputy director, in, uh, which is now a director for research in Sarawak, 
uh, with the Sarawak Forestry Department. So I have uh, easy access now. So I can cover Sarawak already. And then I managed to go to the highest top of the mountain in Peninsular Malaysia, which is Gunung Tahan, in four days, day and night, walking at least 13 kilometers per day. And apart from that, Gunung Sarut in uh, Terengganu, one of the coolest uh, peak in Terengganu, which is about 10 to 15 degrees at night. Okay, and also the Ulu Langat, and Gunung Sarut as well in Setiu, and to Sabah, and also to uh, Sarawak in the interior of Heart of Borneo. And of course, my backyard, Genting Highlands, I always go to this spot uh, to, to look at the orchids. And of course, in, Gun in Cemerong, in Terengganu. So the, uh, to the, the discovery is not that easy without the help of many people. Okay? Not to mention the, the money that is needed, the funds that is needed, but the people that is helping me to look at this and the mentors and my co-workers and all. Okay? I have met a very good, uh, uh, I have befriended people, like the top orchid uh, people, people in the world, like Professor Mark Ches and uh, uh, Dr. Mike Fay in Kew. And I'm able to work with them during my sabbatical in 2014. Uh, so most of the things that we look into at that point of time is the DNA barcoding. So that is the next thing that is going to in, in orchids. And then I have friends like uh, Professor Lee Nam Suk from Korea and also Chris from uh, China in Kunming. He is a breeder of orchids and he wants to venture into wild orchids, uh, 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 what you call it, uh, growing now. And of course, uh, Dr. Barry, Barry Cohn from Selby Botanical Gardens, and my mentor and my, my friend, uh, Professor Emeritus Datuk Dr. Latif Muhammad, and uh, he's here today. Thank you, Pote. I always call him Pote. And then, of course, with Professor Hingins from Selby Botanical Garden, and my friends and co worker in Kew, uh, Dr. Rohir and Dr. Nobi. Yeah, there's so many others I cannot mention. I have people in Australia, Dr. Kingsley uh, Nixon. You can see all those people that are associated with me in my work of orchids inside my inaugural book. So that's why the inaugural book is about 100 pages. There's so many things to say. Okay? When you talk about diversity, now I, I'm going into Malaysia per se. Malaysia per se means that these, uh, all the orchids that are found in Malaysia, but I haven't covered all of them. I probably touched about 30% of it. Okay, Malaysia land mass is mere 340,000 uh, kilometers square. So this particular uh, area, mind you, has the species more than 3,000. And most of these species found in Kinabalu, more than 2,000. Almost 2,000 found in, in uh, Kinabalu. About 16% of the world's total species is found in Malaysia. We're a small country like our, ours. Uh, no doubt that we are the biodiversity hotspots, and therefore it is this particular figure contribute to that particular um, uh, idea of Malaysia being the biodiversity hotspots. And more than 20% are endemic, that means only found in Malaysia. And out of this, 40% of them are flagship species, very beautiful. The word, the word flagship here are beautiful orchids. So here I, I presented one of the beautiful, um, what you call it, dendrobium, uh, named after our VC, uh, dendrobium Ainie. And of course, my students said that I, I, they need to honor me as well. So they gave me one more dendrobium called dendrobium Russie. So that those, you ask me, why is it so funny, the names? Okay? My husband always asks me, why can't you just put a simple name? I said, cannot, because I have to follow the nomenclature rules. I have to put it in a Latin manner. And Latinize my name, become Russier. Study method, very simple. I don't need all those heavy missionaries. I don't need all those uh, uh, equipments uh, to check any whatever things that is in the forest. All I need is plastic bag, a machete, a skatier, and some spirit. That's it, enough. This particular sample, I name it myself as opportunistic sampling method. Opportunity, when you find them, you collect them. You cannot put a plot when you study orchids. You might not find in your plot, you say, oh, I want to put a plot here. You might not find any orchids inside that plot. So therefore, you have to go around walking randomly in the forest and 
you, if, you are, if you are lucky, you found them. So that is opportunistic. And the method is very simple. I identify a location, okay? I visit the location, I did the sampling, and identify the plants, and then I wrote a manuscript, and finally I publish. So that's the rule of a thumb, we must publish or you perish. So therefore, in my, my study, I don't need a sophisticated uh, machineries to, to identify my, my orchids. I just need my two eyes and my two spectacles and sometimes with, <laughs> with light microscope. Okay? So the location of my study locations are many all around Malaysia. Okay? I choose to, to, to segregate my, my research into forest types. Okay, I study the lime forest, limestone forest first, then I study the pit swamp forest, the heath forest, the mountain forest, and the hill forest. All these different different forest types will have different different kinds of or different different types of species in the in the area. Collecting trips is sometimes very interesting as well. Okay, so this is the, my Gunung Tahan team. Okay, my students. And, uh, there are more ladies and men. Okay, so we we raised the the stream. There are thirteen streams to cross before you reach the peak of Gunung Tahan. This is Imbak Canyon in Sabah. Uh, we have to go through the Swelling River. Uh, this is Baliau Basin Expedition in Sabah, and of course we have sometimes we have the luxury. Uh, the uh, what you call it um, from the Yaisan Sabah, they are very very rich, so they give us a helicopter ride to our site. Okay, apart from that, I will be going with a few students of mine to many many parts of uh, in, in uh, Malaysia for collecting. I don't need a big team, so all I need is sleep in a hammock. Okay, then I found all these beauties. Okay, the 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 reward is that when you found something like this. Okay, when you look at this, these orchids here, you can find this kind of thing is really a reward. Not all the time you will see orchids more than five at one spot, but these, there are more than 20 plants blooming at one time at one spot. And some of it uh, actually uh, just wanted to uh, bloom and some are already dried out. That is in Gunung Sarut. And then these are my team. Okay, so of recent years I have more uh, guy student and ladies to do orchids. Let, let me uh, bring you into all the forests that I have been to, the collection that I have done, and all the orchids that I've identified in that particular forest types. So for here, the PM there, Peninsula Malaysia, uh, Pit Swamp Forest, they are aged more than 200,000 years old. And the pit is actually more than four meters uh, deep. Okay, they're very susceptible to environment changes. And so the loss of habitat means the loss of specific orchid species. They, in this kind of forest, there are species that are endemic only, uh, or restricted to that kind of forest. So therefore, if that forest is destroyed, the orchid is also being destroyed. And then we have some, this is Sungai Babar in Pahang. And uh, Selidak Bentango, my backyard and my hometown. So this is a, is a mangrove forest. And of course, this is Tasik Berombak in Setiu, Terengganu. Anybody that's from Terengganu don't know that this thing exists, it exists. Tasik Berombak and it's always clear blue water. In Pitswap Forest, we, uh, my team uh, uh, discovered or recorded 152 species altogether. These are some of the species. We have arachnid, we have the Pephiophalenopsis, um, and this is uh, Pephiophalenante hookeriana. We call it Kinta wheat because there are plenty in Kinta Valley. And also, of course, is the Bulbophyllum, and another Bulbophyllum. Bulbophyllum, they have very different uh, flower, uh, um, be, be, many characteristics and many shapes of flowers and also colors. So this is one of them with a, a circle um, array of, of and this, this is another one. It's the same uh, section, okay? 
all together. Okay. So there's another one that's in a bunch. When, when you see a flower in a bunch like that, that means the flowers are small. So don't ask me how do you make it, make it so big like that. Of course, it's through the lenses. So I expand it that way. So all these plants, some, sometimes the plants are big flowers, some are small. And of course, on your right is actually the Gramatophyllum speciosum, the giant orchid or the tiger orchid, which is actually common in the swamp forest. And then another terrestrial orchid, which is also found not only in the swamp forest, but also in the hill forest, which is Nep Nephalophyllum, the Lux Nephalophyllum speciosum. The leaves is actually uh, brown in color, the same like the forest floor, and the flowers a slight tinge of a uh, pink. And then we have another species called the Trichotosia, which is very hairy. And of course, the, the Cymbidium finlesonianum. In Sarawak, we call that orchid jamban. Because it always grows on all the old time ago, we have jamban outside our house. Maybe all the new ones, the new generation never saw that kind of jamban before. So the toilets are actually outside the house. So then normally the, these orchids will grow there. And then of course, we have the Procoglottis and another Bulbophyllum. Okay, then we go to limestone forest. This is one of the forests that I studied for a very long time because limestone is very difficult to assess. So here, we I did study in detail in Wang Klian Perlis, in Machinchang Langkawi Kedah, and Padawan Bau Sarawak, and also in Mulu Sarawak. So all from this particular region, all this area, I come out with um, a start with orchids of Perlis, whereby here we discovered 139 taxa. Taxa means either species, genus, or subspecies. So there are four subfamilies, 64 genera, and 11 species are new records. During that study, we discovered that 11 species are actually new records. So this is one of the new records, Dendrobium hugii, and some of the area of Crassia, and the uh, Gastrochilus hainanensis, only found in Hainan actually, but now found also in Perlis. Uh, then the another one is Gastrochilus obligus and uh, trix, uh, tricoto, um, what is this? Trixpamum pensal and also the Malaxis. And of course, this is the Malaxis, uh, th this is uh, Ludicia. Okay, another Bulbophyllum. Those are the, some of the orchids found in Perlis limestone. And not to forget, this is Dendrobium linguella, very striking when you go to the jungle, because we will have a lot of flowers in one bunch. And also the uh, Dendrobium secundum, pink flush. And this is one of the most beautiful Habinaria found in Perlis. Habinaria carnea, my favorite color. Okay, and this one is uh, Phalaenopsis miniata, very small flower, but in a, it appears in a bunch, and uh, Chrysostoma. Okay, so this is one of the flagship species found in Perlis, the Pephiopedilum nevium, the white sleeper orchids. Species new record to Peninsular Malaysia as Gastrochilus hainanensis and also Gastrochilus obligus. Okay. I don't know the Malay name. I only know the, the scientific name, whereby the scientific name is an universal name for all plants. And Sarawak limestone orchids. Limestone orchid in Sarawak, very, very interesting. There are about 235 species in 66 genera, 26 species endemic to limestone only, 16 species endemic to Borneo, 37 species new records to Sarawak, and 15 species new records to Borneo. So from that study that I did for the past seven years to cover all this area in Sarawak, we, we, this is the count that we have. I have no doubt there are plenty more in the forest itself. So here is one of the spectacular uh, sleep, sleeper orchids, um, Pephiopedilum luyai, Pephiopedilum stonii, and also Sandorianum. So these are the two species that are very, very 
re requires limestone area to grow. And of course, on your right is the Banda um, Cinderiana, and the, on, the, on your left is Banda Cinderiana, and on your right is actually Dimorphorchis. These particular orchids, okay, this one, it has two flower shapes on one spike. So therefore, it got its name called Dimorphorchis because there are two morphological forms in one uh, spike. And of course, this is the uh, Anotokilus uh, or Dusina, now currently known as Dusina mamorata, endemic to Badawan and Bau. And also, of course, another Bulbophyllum reticulatum, also endemic to Padawan. And this is the Sarawak uh, National Orchid called the uh, Phalaenopsis balina. And also the Malaxis. And apart from that, we move on to mountain forests. The mountain forests I studied many parts in the in, in Peninsular Malaysia. Mountain forests are known as forests found to be on elevation more than 100, uh, 1,000 meters. So those are called mountain forests. Therefore, the lower mountain forest is 1,200 to 1,500 meters. Upper mountain forest is whatever is above 1,500 meters. So here, there are five locations that I studied. Okay, Maxwell Hill, which is also called the Piping Hills, and Fraser's Hill in Pahang, Genting Highlands in Pahang, Cameron Highlands in Pahang, and also in Gunung Jerai, Kedah. Okay? Some of the things is actually not inside the, the thing. When you, when you transfer from MAC to uh, non-MAC, it becomes like that. Okay, the smallest and the oldest hill resort is actually what, what uh, Bukit Larut famous for. Okay, and there's actually the resort has been there for the past 100 years. And the highest peak in, um, in uh, Gunung Jerai is, uh, not Gunung Jerai, which in Bukit Larut is actually 1,448 meters. And they actually is situated in the Bintang Range. And in this mountain, we collected 29 species recorded as new to Bukit Larut, six species endemic to Peninsular Malaysia. So these are some of the species that are found in Bukit Larut. Dendrobium rosium, not rosier, Dendrobium rosium, rosius, and sometimes they call it rosius. And also the Dendrochilum, Bromhidia, and Malaxis. And of course, the only Vanda found in Peninsula Malaysia, which is the Vanda Helvola. And then we go on to another mountain forest, Genting Highlands. Gunung Ulukali is the highest peak in Genting Highlands, which is 1,700 meters tall. A temperature cold, 12 to 24 degrees centigrade. And the humidity is very high, up to 85%. Undisturbed forest until 1967. After that, it is now it is considered as disturbed forest. And, uh, and uh, cloud forest is the summit region of the Genting Highlands is actually the cloud forest. We're discovered by clouds all the time. Okay, here we recorded 134 orchid taxa, 51 genera, 46 records for new records for Genting Highlands. And 29 species endemic to Peninsular Malaysia, 9 rediscovered. And orchids of Genting Highlands, there are some of them. Uh, Dendrobium repicula. This is a new record. Okay, the plant is actually, with, the flowers are bigger than the leaves, per se. Okay, this is Hemenorchis javanica, previously endemic to Java, but when I discovered that in Genting Highlands, so therefore we break the, the record of it being endemic to Java, it also found in Malaysia. So that is Hemenorchis javanica. And then, of course, this is the Derbium, the Dendro, Derbium Hasseltiae, plenty in uh, Genting Highlands. And uh, sleeper orchids. Pephiopidilum loyi, and another Gramatophyllum stepiflorum, the, uh, the dendrobium. Then this is dendrobium heterocarpum, dendrobium uh, macropodum. This also another new records from Sulawesi, uh, dendro, dendro, uh, dendrobium kurukotilobum. So actually found only in Sulawesi, but now it's also found in Genting Highlands. And these five sand orchids, hmm? the, the Coribas. 
I studied Koribas. I got a, I have a privilege to study Koribas per se because I got a grant that is actually only to study Koribas. There are two endemic species here, the Koribas uh, selangorensis and Koribas haltemiae. So that particular five cent orchids are very beautiful and they have their role in, the eco in ecology because when, if there is no mosses, there is no Koribas. So that is associated with the the uh, indicator as the um, for cold temperature. Orchids of Fraser's Hill is another uh, area in the mountain that I studied. Fraser's Hill is known to have the highest peak with 1,500 meters. And there we recorded 400 and, uh, 247 species, 82 genera and five subfamilies. That means all the, sub, all the five subfamilies of orchids are found in Fraser's Hill. 92 species are new records to Fraser's Hill, seven species are new records to Malaysia, and four species is to Peninsula Malaysia. It's getting very, uh, when you talk like, you're trying to comprise something that you have done for 20 years, is um, sometimes it's, you have to, we, the, um, the words are missing from what we wanted to say. So 80 species are threatened because we did the evaluation of the status of the conservation status of the species. 80 species are threatened and 11 species are rare, considered as rare, according to IUCN red list uh, characteristics. Fraser's Hill house many beautiful orchids. This is the podium. And this is, um, what do you call this? Never mind but it's a terrestrial orchids. So this one is actually a bulbophyllum. Macropodanthus. This particular species is very important because uh, Ridley found it in 1911. That was the only record so far, but now we found it in uh, the past, uh, we found it in 2013. So it was rediscovered after 112 years. So rediscovery of Macropodanthus. And of course, the Dendrobium, Cantrophyllum, and the uh, Tania rayana. This is some of the rare and endemic species in uh, Fraser's Hill. The Bulbophyllum, the Anatochilus, the Koribas, another Koribas, and also the, only the, 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 uh, the newly discovered Vanilla, Vanilla Nor Ashikiniana, named after our uh, Permaisuri Selangor. So that it was uh, launched in 2007, 17, 2017, eh? Vanilla Nur Ashikiniana. And then in Cameron Highlands, I studied uh, many years in Cameron, I studied the orchids for many years in Cameron Highlands. The highest peak will be 2,000 2, over uh, meters. The temperature during the day is about uh, 17 to 24 degrees, uh, 17 at night. But previously, it was recorded to be more uh, like uh, 10, about 20, 50 years ago. And here in uh, Cameron Highlands, uh, we discovered, uh, we recorded 238 orchid species from 80 genera. 21 are rare and 7 are endemic to Cameron Highlands. The endem endemism or the only found in that area is very specific because uh, orchids requires a specific uh, soil condition and also uh, the environmental uh, conditions. So therefore, endemism is very high among orchids. Major threat in Cameron is always the vegetable farming or clearing of illegally the forest, which has actually been uh, gazetted as a permanent forest reserve, but they were being uh, opened illegally to make way for vegetable farms. Okay. Orchids of Cameron Highlands, there are some of the species, Acanthifium, Striatum, and some of the Dendrobiums, Fires, and Koribas, and Pephiopidilums, and Dendrobiums. Okay, we continue with my journey into uh, mountain forest, uh, the orchids of Gunung Jerai. Gunung Jerai is also known as Kedah Peak. It is an isolated mountain. Okay, surrounded by paddy fields and also with kampongs. That's the only mountain you can see from far in Kedah. Okay, even from Langkawi, you can see Gunung Jerai. And also from uh, Penang, you can see Gunung Jerai as well. Okay, there are 136 species found there. 
uh, recorded is not per se 136, but we found only 136. Five subfamilies and 65 genera. And 24 new records to Kedah, and one new species uh, named after uh, the current um, forest director of Selengo, uh, uh, Datuk Puat, is Koribas Puati. Okay. Orchids of Gunung Jerai, there are some uh, very notable and some beautiful species here. The Koribas, of course, this is Koribas Jiminigibus, only found in Gunung Jerai, but also found in Sumatra. In Malaysia itself, only found in Gunung Jerai. This is Koribas Jiminigibus. And we have uh, Bulbophyllum sigaldie, very difficult to pronounce the name, but Bulbophyllum, I hope you all know what is Bulbophyllum, because they have bubs, the orchids, they have bubs. And of course, this is the Koribas called the Koribas Puati. Then we go to Selengo other forest types, okay? Selengo has the, all the forest types in Peninsular Malaysia. Eh? They are about 8,000 kilometers square. Selengo is one of the uh, biggest state. All major forest types is also available here. We have pit swamp forest, they have um, uh, mangrove forest, lowland deep drop cup forest, hill forest, deep drop cup forest, upper hill deep drop cup forest, oak laurel forest and mountain ericaceous forest. These are all the types of forests found in Selengo. And therefore, uh, the number of species found in Selengo is also very high for orchids. We found 273 species in 71 genera and five subfamilies are represented in Perlis. One of the most notable, and I like this flower because it is always single but big flower, Bulbophyllum pileatum and also endemic species called the uh, Dendrobium uh, Silogini kaliana, not Dendrobium, this is Silogini kaliana, named after Gunung Ulukali, and of course the Dendrobium anosmum, also found here, Arachnis, and the orchids, uh, and the uh, vanilla, Nor Ashikindiana, also found in, in, uh, in Selengo. And of course, this is another name that they said is, was named after me, but it is actually not. This is Cymbidium roseus, rosium. It's not, uh, the reason why it's rosium because it is very rosy in, rosy in color. So that's why it is called the Cymbidium rosium. And then we have the Calante and the Bulbophyllum and another Dendrobium, a Bulbophyllum by Phyrum. Only two flowers, that's why I buy florum. And orchids of Tranganu. This is one more forest that uh, very interesting to study. And uh, because there are many uh, logging concessionaries in Tranganu, therefore discovery is very easy in Tranganu. So we, we did study on Breeze Hills Forest in Setiu and also in Dungun. Kuala Koh and Kenya Lake area logging area in Tengganu. Those are the areas that I have been visited, that I have visited so far in Tengganu. And from there, uh, with a collaboration with my uh, avid naturalist, uh, Mr. Dom Nikong uh, in uh, Tengganu, he normally collects all these orchids and asks me to identify. And then we have identified 365 orchid species altogether, 124 species of recorded new to Tengganu, and one is new record to Malaysia. And of course, out of that, nine new species have been described. Because it is very product, it is, uh, collection is very easy in the logging area in Trungkanu. The rescue mission, so this is how he did all the rescue mission on motorbike and on his two legs, bus number 11. Hmm? On his two legs, so he collect all these orchids. And once it's blooming, he, he will ask me, oh, what are the species? Now he is a better, uh, uh, I think it's a very good, uh, what you call it, taxonomies already in terms of orchids. And this is how we, they, he, they collect from the logging concessionaries. They collect by the tons because if you leave them there, they will die. So better collect whatever you can find, whatever is alive. And I, normally I will also follow them to the forest. So it's a, it's a normal thing for us to walk for 10 hours or 8 hours in the jungle. Nothing follow us, Prof. Iqbal, no worries. Because we say goodbye to them before we leave. Okay, so he, being an avid naturalist, he built on his own uh, effort with his own money 
a wild orchid conservatory for Trunganu. So he named it Wild Orchid uh, of Trunganu X C2 Conservation. So he collect all these from the logging concessionaries and put them in behind his house. Very nice and well kept place. Uh, so one of the botanical garden probably we are we BPM is put on shame for what he's what he's doing in Trunganu. Because he has a very nice collection and he makes it so beautiful and people can visit his place. Okay, so that is Dom. Hmm? Every day, almost every week, he was in the jungle. So he's called another name. I will later on, I will call him another jungle man. Okay, so these are all, some of the species that we are able to uh, collect in Trenganu. They are all beautiful orchids. I'm not going to show you, to tell you every single species of them. So, but those are the things I hope you enjoy uh, looking at them. And uh, some of the dendrobiums, the phalaenopsis, and of course the phalaenopsis as well, and the sleeper orchids. So dendrobiums of Trangano. He come up with this uh, poster called dendrobiums of Trangano, bulbophyllums of Trangano, so that people can easily uh, recognize them in the wild. All the scientific names is also provided in, those, in this kind of uh, these posters of his. Critical Critically endangered. Why we call them a critically endangered? Because we have a means to uh, to look at the status of each species. So orchids conservations and orchid uh, threats in Malaysia is nothing new. As long as there are plants, there are threats to them because they are they, the most of the wild plants is actually in the jungle. So jungles has been locked. Uh, the, they've been open reforestation and so on and so on. So that is one of the major threat. When the forest is gone, the orchids also gone. Some of the species will never survive after the forest has been cut down. So these are the critically endangered orchids in Peninsular Malaysia. One of it is Kuribas uh, holtemiae, an endemic species. The Bulbophyllum uh, babatum, eh, not Bulbophyllum. Oh, this is um, Tephiopedilum, sleeper orchids. Chrysostoma, and also the podium. So from that, uh, from all the studies they have done for the past 20 years with my students, there are 167, all of them, all together, the undergrads, and about 47 or, or, 47 or 67 uh, postgraduates, a lost count. Uh, they've been with me in the jungle, in and out. Okay, we discovered 25 new species altogether. 11 are orchids. So the new species is the uh, Vanilla Norris Aishiki Naina, launched in 2017, and also Vanilla Sanguinio Bonosa, uh, also, also published in 2017. And of course, I will have a privilege to go to the, to the Istana, the palace, to meet the queen, so to present to her the painting of the newly uh, discovered species and named after her. And another one is Koribas Puati, found in Gunung Jerai. Okay, so the new species. And another new addition is for Sultan of Trangano, Sultan Mizan. So this is the dobium found in Trangano itself, named it after him, uh, Dendrobium Mizaniae. Just is already published in Phytotaxa Journal of Botany. And the new species also, we have another Bromhidia petuangensis. Petuang is a name of a place in Trangano. So this Bromhidia is found in Petuang. So therefore, we have to make a, to give them a Latin name called Petuangensis. Latinize the name of the place, Petuang, to become Petuangensis. So that is Bromhidia petuangensis, published, will be published soon in Pakistan Journal of Botany. I hope I'm not, I'm not uh, making you sleepy. Eh? Am I? The new species continues. So this is one of the most um, beautiful one uh, among all the dendrobiums that I've seen. So this is named after our BC, Dendrobium Ainie. So that is the painting. You can see all these paintings uh, uh, being displayed behind. So uh, please feel free to appreciate them. And of course, this is my dendrobium, Dendrobium Russier and the paintings. And apart from uh, looking into the wild species, I also ventured with a partner in uh, Kedah uh, to look into new hybrids. This was done about 15 years ago. And uh, finally, after 10 years, we come up with uh, one stable breed, 
So this new hybrid, this is one of the, the new hybrid, is named after the former Pamaisuri Agong um, in, in launched in 2015, and it's named as Dendrobium Tonku Hamina Royal. So when you look at the name there, you know it's actually a hybrid because the way we, we uh, give them the name, the way we write the name is different from a wild species name. So that was the plant that I presented to her during the launching of Floria 2015. And that is our VC, the Pengarah of Coscom then, who, do, who support me during the launching. And that is how it looks like. So it's a very beautiful uh, hybrid actually, and flowering all the year round. So it's not something that you can uh, avoid not seeing the flowers. Papers and books that have been published, I have published 12 books as Prof. Iqbal mentioned earlier, and nine of that is from Wild Orchids. And uh, 253 scientific papers have been published, some short, some, some long, some even about uh, 78 pages altogether, only on uh, one paper. So some people can produce 10 papers from that 78 pages, right? So these are the books that I have published. Uh, we co-wrote with my students and my co-workers. The Orchids of Perlis, that is the proceed from the study that I did in uh, Perlis. And also I wrote a book for Orchid of Selangor, Orchidia Selangoriana, Wild Orchid of Selangor, also written with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, through the studies that I did with my postgraduate students. And the jewels, Lost Jewels of Trangganu, Wild Orchids of Trangganu, this is in the process of printing now. And uh, Enchanted Orchids of Fraser's Hill, a pictorial guide, also now in press. I don't have the copies back there. And uh, Orchids of Pit Swamp Forest. This particular orchid was sponsored by the UNDP at that time, in, 19, in 2007, 2007, when I was uh, doing my, my sabbatical, my first ever sabbatical in 2007. I, did, I wrote this book called The Orchids of Pit Swamp Forest. And of course, the uh, recently published book, uh, Sarawak uh, Wild, uh, Limestone Orchid Forest, uh, uh, the Limestone, Sarawak Limestone Forest Orchids, okay, that was just published and yet to be launched. So this is co-wrote with my classmate and my uh, roommate, uh, Runi Sylvester Punga. She is able to fly in from Kuching today to be here with me, to support me. Thank you very much, Runi. And uh, discovering the wonders of Malaysian orchids. This is also in the final uh, uh, press now. This is actually the uh, revised version of the previously uh, launched in 2015. Okay, half of the book is actually being re uh, the the earlier version was uh, only 87 pages. Now it's 150 pages. So this is a new revised edition. We published in 2019. And of course, the orchids of the mountain forest in Peninsular Malaysia that's published by Penerbit UPM. Okay, among all these orchids here, there are books here, eight books here. Uh, one, two, three, four will be published this year, 2019. Okay, it's not something that I do overnight, but it's something that I have been accumulating for the past 20 years. So I managed, these are the years where I decided to publish all in books form so that everybody that is uh, the latter generation can enjoy whatever is there has been there has been recorded and at least to see at, the, at least to enjoy the pictures if they can't enjoy the living plants okay and apart from being a taxonomist uh, using the classical manner approach i did venture into orchid's dna barcoding with my affiliation with the q botanical garden so this, um, from this study, I have uh, deposited at least 136 accessions into the gene bank, whereby people can access the gene bank and look into and use it for either for classification or identification of plants species. And all the gen genera that I have studied is actually has been deposited at the Coribus, Dendrobium, Bulbophyllum, and also Pythiobedilum altogether. And we use these markers, MITK, ITS. Uh, TRNH, PSBHA, and RBCL. So these are the terms of genetic terms, so which I don't want to elaborate upon. In conclusion, okay, let me conclude about well, the 20 years of work. Okay, orchid diversity in Malaysia is one of the most exciting tasks to study. 
It's not only because they are beautiful, they are not only because they are fragrant, because they are orchids that plays an important role in ecology, in the ecology ecosystem. And uh, new discovery of species, new to science and new record of, to the country is almost certain every time you go to the jungle and study them. Inaccessible forested areas are now becoming accessible and many plant collecting activities were conducted in these areas. So that's how the um, number of orchids found in Trenganu is very high because we, are going, we now venture into um, logging concessionaries to collect our orchids. So therefore, do, by doing so, we are actually rescuing the orchids from the logging concessionaries, leads to new discoveries and almost guaranteed species conservation. Because we collect them out and put them into ex situ uh, um, this thing. I would like to uh, say thank you to everybody that uh, here, present here today. Uh, some are the Professor Emeritus, some are my former students, my stu uh, current students, and some of my co-workers, um, professors from my faculty, and my institute, Prof. Ayn, and uh, my former boss, uh, Prof. Uh, Zanel Abidin, Talib Zad, and uh, everybody that is present here. Pok Teh, thank you very much. Datu Sri Lim, thank you very much for coming. And who else did I see here? Oh, Rizal from the Kementerian Keta, Rizal. And Dr. Wan Juliana, Dr. Uh, um, Hajam Aydin, uh, Prof. Karen, thank you very much for attending. Prof. Gwen, Prof. Jaga, Dr. Tanot, Dr. Dana from all the way from Sarawak. And, that, and uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Japa, thank you very much for being here. And, uh, Prof., um, and Pastor Bula, who has always been my um, uh, a prayer for me whenever I go to the jungle and, and hopefully that nothing follows me back. But anyway, uh, for your, I'm very, very privileged because when I go to the jungle, I see them, so I don't have to be worried about them. So only people who cannot see things, they cannot be, will be worried, right? But for me, uh, they are just there to be a part of the ecosystem. Okay, to my friend and my, my BFF, uh, Trisa Nigur from uh, Petronas, and also Sofia. Thank you very much for being here. <clears throat> Sebab. And to my uh, brothers and brothers, uh, sisters, and my mom. Not Hindu Ananai, that's in Iban uh, language, asking whether she's sleeping or not. Okay, thank you very much, everybody, for being here. It has been a very uh, long journey, and I thank uh, those people who brought me into UPM. <coughs> uh, Pro uh, Datin Farida, Pote. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Rosia Go, for the presentation. Um, I guess the contents of the presentation is very, very pictorial. You can see lots of pictures. Um, and actually, I was chatting with uh, Professor Basha. I mean, how can actually she remember all the names of the, of the, of the orchids? Yeah. Um, I think uh, orchids is considered as the most beautiful and um, mysterious plant species and uh, I think it's good to hear that we have recorded many species as well and um, um, it is her privilege in her own area to determine uh, who's going to get the name of the new species uh, which in my case I don't have that privilege in my, in my, in my area to give new names um, and I think uh, uh, from uh, her presentation as well, uh, we able to see how important it is to preserve uh, areas and new species uh, in the areas that, uh, that we human do logging and explore. And uh, I do really hope that this will ins inspire uh, all of us uh, to do the same within our own area. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Professor Rusia for her excellence and involvement um, in teaching, research, and etc. And uh, let's join me to give her a round of applause. <laughs> Lastly, congratulations again to Professor Rusia for completing her inaugural lecture. Uh, and uh, we hope for the best, and we hope that she will find uh, many more species and maybe in the future there will be like uh, Iqbalia or something. <laughs> so I hope that to see all of you in the next inaugural lecture. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you yang berbahagia Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Saripan for sharing the event and thank you yang berbahagia Professor Dr. Rusia Go for sharing her life work and research on fascinating Malaysian orchids. We wish all the best for yang berbahagia Professor Dr. Rusia Go. Ladies and gentlemen, with that it marks the end of our session today. We would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to everyone with us today for the support and contribution in making this event a great success. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to invite Yang Berbahagia Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Saripan and Faculty Management to the mini exhibition and lunch at the foyer. We would also like to invite other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to the foyer for lunch. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you in our upcoming events. Wabilahi Taufiq wal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum. Ramatullahi wabarakatuh.